I want to show you guys pff, my fully painted war cry terrain set and people fighting to the death. This has been s probably several years coming. Um, it has taken me a while to get to this point, but I am really proud, really happy to show you guys this setup. This is the Untamed Beast versus the Iron Golems from the original Warcry starter box. It doesn't happen very often where I get the chance to paint everything up from not just start to finish, but all of the components that exist within a certain game premise and have it out on the table in one go. When I got to put this board out and I put the terrain out and I put the troops out onto the field, I was like, wow, this is really cool. I have a really lovely warm feeling inside just going, damn, I did it. I was able to paint all of this and it feels cool. It looks cool, or at least I like it. And um, I am really proud of this scene that's been created. And this is the table or the board that I get to play at home. And I am yeah, excited not only to play, but I think it's a sense of accomplishment about being able to produce something that A, that you kind of imagine in your head, um, but you can bring out onto the table play with your friends and stuff like that. The more and more that I have been painting, the more and more I think of things as a scene, or I see them in not just the model, but I see them as in the place that they are in. And so when I think about painting, I think about light a lot, about where light is coming from, its placement, what its mood and setting is. And when I was creating this kind of setup or the scene in a way, I had the idea that this was in the, if you know like the regions of like chaos and stuff, which I don't really, but like closer to the north where it's m more connected to chaos, there's undead lurking about, it's meant to be gloomy and dark, and that was the kind of setting in my brain that I wanted this place to exist in. And so while I was painting, I was thinking about keeping it at like nighttime and keeping it dark, depressing, scary, ominous. It wouldn't be strange if there were undead creatures, you know, loitering about if that's what they do. Do they loiter? Probably. When they got nothing to do, they loiter. Because this is like chaos, like war bands fighting off against each other, there is a sort of sense of malevolence, evil, ominous, darkness, gloom, kind of all of those settings together in this. And I wanted to make the scenery feel like that. Also, it matched well with the map face. When I'm painting, I don't always fully know what I'm doing when I'm doing it. I kind of paint in a way in which I am doing it, not just trial and error, but yeah, just like playing around and trying to create something in my mind. So I generally always do a test piece whenever I'm painting stuff. And I painted this piece first, um, before doing all the other things, just to make sure I knew where I, I, I liked where it was going. I started with, with my terrain working from a very dark green base and working up to a sort of a brighter turquoise. And so when we think about nighttime, you get a lot of light blue or like a kind of turquoisey, tealy blue, white kind of color that happens. And I wanted to work towards that section, kind of representing how moonlight looks out into the world. As well as like creating and making it feel like it's at nighttime, I also wanted to give it the sense of derelictness where it's been aged, it's rusting, there's slime, there's ooze, you know, it's um, splattered from mud effects and it's just no longer new, it's not shiny. It shouldn't feel like that when it's been like destroyed buildings and things. Um, so it was, it's been a lot of fun and interesting practice painting up terrain. And actually painting terrain is a little tricky because there's a lot of it to do, but in another way, it's actually kind of fun or kind of easy because you don't have to be so uh, exacting with your paint. You can throw things kind of wildly because when you actually look into the, like the real world, things aren't uniform a lot of the time. Things are sporadic, like there's weird things, like this is weird dirt just here, or the splatter effect, something here. So actually creating it to make it look chaotic is part of making terrain feel like it's real. You can 
just put little details in funny places and it gives a touch of like vibrancy or, or light, you know, or like life to the thing. Whereas, you know, painting all the skulls or the skeleton pieces here or adding like weird green dots, like neon green, like splash dots in places that are like right here or like in this area here, there's like a lot of slime that I've got kind of like dripping down the wall. I also was trying to create effects where not only is there like rusting, but like the rusting pools into like dark crevices, as well as um, creating playing with different tones like magentas and purples and oranges. And you know when you think about like a cathedral and you think about like the stained glass and stained glass where if like the moonlight was shining through it, it would have like that kind of strange like the colors of the stained glass but appearing out and i have that kind of in the back of my mind a lot of the time like it's okay to add additional colors to things because it could be from a source being applied from something and you know when you're painting terrain it needs to look pretty good from all sides because you don't really know how it's going to be set up so you need to be able to see things and so it's okay to throw color down in a place without it really making a whole lot of sense um Sure, you want it to have some sense, but it's it's more about making adding nuances and and textures and things like that rather than being like, well, the light falls this specific way and it can only fall this way. And you don't want to worry about that too much when you're you know tabletop gaming and stuff. One of my favorite pieces in the terrain section actually is the bell tower. I wanted to make the the bell itself feel rusted, old, like an old bronze, coppery kind of bell, and to give it. A, you know, a little bit of like patina and wear, and like verdigris, which is like that kind of bluish effect that you get in a little bit of rust. So that's like one of my favorites. And of course it stands out amongst everything else just for being a fair bit taller. I really like the face here as well. I'm just getting, you know, aging it and making it feel like it's old and worn and that the stat if it was a statue had fallen years ago and it's just sort of being weathered as time goes on. So I really like that kind of stuff as well. As to the models and themselves, you know, these are the iron golems. Um, I painted them in their kind of classic paint schemes. I really like this uh, this big bruiser dude with like the ball hand spike deal. And he's also quite rock solid in the game, though a bit slow. And I did them these guys in non-metallic metal for a chunk of it and I wanted them to feel kind of like weird and freaky looking. So their skin is kind of like purpley blue, um, which is not really very human, is it? And then for the other guys, the untamed beast people, they're like from, I don't know, I feel like they're from some sort of jungle, but I actually have no idea where they're from. Um, and I just painted them much more like humans, barbarians effectively, coming from some sort of strange wilderness and coming here to fight. So they look a bit, they look much more normal in comparison. One of the things that I have garnered from doing this sort of project and like painting through all of these things to create this scene is how, A, the sense of accomplishment that you get from doing it completely, but also like what you're able to do. Like now it says, Ooh, do I want to try and build a game board, like a wall gaming table? Or do I want to make like other bits of terrain where it's like forests and things like that and paint them to things? So it, it's definitely like piqued my interest in thinking about doing dioramas and various other stuff because there's some really cool things like models are awesome to paint, but models in a scene is extra cool. That's like that helps you give it gives you context to a thing, whereas just seeing it separately outside where we see it like so often in a like a white in a with like a white backdrop or a black backdrop with nothing going on. It looks great. We can see the model perfectly, which is what we want, but we it's not where they are. Right. We don't see us in places that are just like black and white. Um, so I'm definitely more interested in playing with more scenery to create this kind of a feeling that exists, you know, not only just for gaming, but for being able to look at. I am going to do exactly the same thing with the new Kill Team box. I got the, the Octarius box and the Nuckman box, and I'm going to go to town on the terrain, and I'm also going to paint up all four squads, which will be a bit tough, and I'm going to try and do some cool things with that for the future, because I think it's really 
really cool to be able to play your game with everything painted. And it, feel, it just makes you feel happy, <laughs> makes me feel happy, um, to be able to look at this, play this, and feel like it's all there, and it helps you feel more enveloped into the scene and into the game that you're playing. So I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to get down to this. Have you guys completed a whole board? Have you guys had this experience where you're like, yes, or even just painted the squad and felt really proud of what you were able to accomplish? Or do you guys know anything about like building terrain, like from scratch and stuff like that and taking trees? Because I really don't actually know a lot about that kind of thing. And I'm just starting to like look into it more and hopefully grow from that and maybe to do some extra cool things. So if you guys have got help or you've got some tips, please bring them my way. Thank you for watching.